The Winter Olympics may not be as popular as its summertime cousin, but it's still an amazing spectacle of sport and competition. However, it appears as though recent studies are suggesting that their future is in danger, and we may not be able to stop it. In today's video, we're going to be going over what the research said, what's going to happen for the Winter Olympics in the future, and what we can do about it, if anything. Stick around because this is going to be a video that you are definitely not going to want to miss. With that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So, is there no more snow? A study done by the Sport Ecology Group at Loughborough University in England and the Protect Our Winters Environment Group has suggested what some fans of the Winter Games have feared for years now. The use of artificial snow at the 2022 Winter Olympics will account for almost 100% of the powdered surface. Why would this be the case? Well, according to the reports, the environment in multiple places all around the world do not have enough natural snow to accommodate for the sports performed at the Winter Olympics which means that the use of fake snow will be at an all-time high during the 2022 games. So what problems could this potentially cause for these games and the future of the game? Well, let's take a look. First, let's take a look into the high water usage. One of the worst side effects of the snow shortage is that in order to operate a fake snow machine, a great deal of water has to be used in order to create enough snow to replicate a natural snowy environment for sports such as snowboarding, downhill skiing, cross-country skiing, ski jumping, and many more. But in order to make snow, you need water, and lots of it. Unfortunately, since the 2022 Winter Olympics are going to be almost 100% relying on artificial snow, the artificial snow machines will be in high numbers and will be operating at high capacity for long periods of time, which means the water consumption numbers will be astronomically high for the entirety of the games. And if the snow machines are turned down for even a couple of hours, the integrity of the games will be in jeopardy. It is a slippery slow for the IOC, pun and absolutely intended, and they'll have to find a way to straddle the fine line between too much water usage and too little snow. On the plus side, the organizing committee in Beijing for the 2022 Games has issued a sustainability report that states that their smart snowmaking machine could use up to 20% less water than traditional snowmaking machines, which could drastically lessen the water usage per machine. However, the issue does not stop after these games. If we, as as a species decided to use incredibly high amounts of water for the Winter Olympics every four years will significantly impact the amount of water on the planet. We're going to have to start asking ourselves if this is a worthwhile use of a precious resource. Is there another way that we can produce a high quality Winter Olympic environment without compromising our water supply? Obviously only time will tell and if we cannot find a way to create fake snow while lowering our water usage, then we may be kissing the Winter Olympics goodbye. Next, Next, fake snow equals fake sport. While fake snow machines and fake snow has been used at the Winter Olympics, no games has ever relied on fake snow in an almost 100% capacity. And while it will significantly increase the water usage as we discussed before, it'll also force the integrity of the games to be under scrutiny for the remainder of the Winter Olympics. Why you ask? Well, for literally the entirety of the history of the Winter Olympic Games up until recently, fake snow has never been used, which means that athletes had to traverse the same environment from year to year, event to event. But now that artificial snow is being used at a high capacity, each athlete now runs the risk of competing the same event on a different surface. Let me explain. The athlete that competes first in a certain event will most likely competing on 100% fake snow. However, the last athlete to compete in the same event are way more likely to be competing on a mix of artificial snow and real snow, which will drastically change the result due to the different surfaces the athletes are competing on. Fake snow, while close to real snow, is not the same. Fake snow has anti-melting agents in it that make it melt much slower, which would definitely affect the drag and handling of the fake snow when compared to the real snow. Additionally, athletes from snow nations such as Canada, Japan, Russia, etc. will most likely be training on real snow leading up to the Olympics, but will then be forced to compete on majority fake snow for the entirety of their respective events. Event. And in that same breath, participants from warmer nations like China, Australia, Bermuda, etc. most likely be doing the majority of their training on artificial snow, which will undoubtedly give athletes from these nations an advantage when it comes to the actual competition. This will most likely wear down the competitive integrity as time goes on. The IOC is clearly going to have to find a solution, but the suggested solutions may not please everyone. So what are the possible solutions? If the IOC intends on finding a solution, 
addition to the high usage of artificial snow machines, it's going to have to explore a great deal of options. One option that's obvious would be to have the host country of the Winter Olympics would have to be a country that naturally has a great deal of snow. This would drastically reduce the amount of artificial snow needed to operate the games. A nation like Japan, Canada, Russia, Sweden, Finland, and many more could easily provide the snow necessary to provide a competitive environment for the Olympic Games. This of course would severely limit the host nation's availability to host, but it would limit the water usage, which is a better alternative to shutting down the Winter Olympics altogether. Another possible option would be to fund and research artificially made snow that uses as little water as possible, so it can be in order to reduce both water consumption and allow for a fair competition. The issue with this option is we may never find a better snowmaking process than we already have, which we obviously cannot use for the long-term operation of the Winter Olympics. So if we cannot find a reasonable solution to making artificial snow, we must find another solution. Obviously, there's a third and much more drastic solution, but it's one that I'm sure nobody would want to see take place. And that, of course, is the complete cancellation of the Winter Olympics. However, there is a way that we could alter the Summer Olympics that would allow for winter sport athletes to compete in their sports in a different way. Let's take a look at it now. Next, we look into winter sports being played indoors. With the exception of snowboarding and skiing events, the majority of the Winter Olympics could be slightly modified to be played indoors, if it's not played indoors already. For example, a high-speed track for all the sledding events could be made indoors, and the carts and sleds used could be modified to be operated on a surface other than ice, like a hardwood floor. That way, the athletes for sports like bobsled, luge, skeleton, and other track events could compete in their sport without having to use excessive amounts of water. Additionally, sports like figure skating, speed skating, and ice hockey could all be played indoors and during the Summer Olympics, as these sports are already played indoors, and the ice rinks needed to house these sports are already in use by the host nation, meaning that there would be little to no added water usage by the host nation. Moreover, if ice hockey were to be played in the summer, it's likely that the NHL would send their players to play in it, making the event much more competitive to watch. The reason players from the NHL do not go to the Olympics now is because the Olympics takes place during the NHL season, which means that team owners are weary about sending players to compete because they might get hurt. Additionally, the league is usually unwilling to pause their season for the duration of the Olympics because of the revenue loss. So putting ice hockey in the summer instead of the winter would be an amazing solution to this problem. If we cannot find a reasonable solution to the water usage problem, I would not be at all surprised to see the end of the Winter Olympics in order to form a single Olympic Games that houses both summer and winter Olympic athletes. That's all we have for you guys today on the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. What do you think is the solution to the water problem? Let us know in the comment section below. And as always, we hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe with the bell rung so you don't miss a single upload on the channel. Thanks again, and we'll see you all in the next video.